Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Madan. I am anatomy faculty at TAMS and I'm sure you guys are aware that now the questions are being asked in a more clinically integrated manner. So now is the time for conceptual learning rather than the factual learning, right? So even in the NEET or in the central exams, the trend is uh, basically they are going to ask you a more of clinically integrated questions. So here I am again. Uh, with a new clinically integrated question. So let's start the discussion, right? So this is, this is the question and the source of the question is DAMS question bank and clinical weakness series. Uh, question says a patient has hoarseness and the uvula that is deviated or points towards the right upon phonation. You conclude the lesion is most likely located in the my choices are based on the bones, cunate nucleus, right vagus or the left nucleus ambiguous. Now before coming to the answer, let us discuss the relevant anatomy and then we will come to the, uh, the I mean answer or the diagnosis, right? And you see, when the patient is presenting to you with the hoarseness means the laryngeal involvement is there and the uvula is deviated towards the right. This is how the uvular deviation looks like. This is how the uvular deviation looks like. Okay. Now the two findings, the laryngeal involvement is there and the palatal involvement is also there. Right. Now we have to find, uh, we have to find out where is the lesion. Right. So let us do that. Questions uh, you may get the deviation of the uvula, the deviation of the angle of the mouth or the tongue or maybe the jaw. Okay, so these are the usually given deviation in the questions, right? So if you look at the deviation, let me explain all these deviations one by one. When you talk about the deviation of the jaw, the jaw is supplied by which is being controlled by which muscles? Uh, the pterygoid muscle. So the pterygoid muscles are supplied by the fifth nerve or the trigeminal nerve, right? So the pterygoid muscles, the action of pterygoid muscle is to push. Okay. So if the right and the left both are working, they will protrude. Uh, the uh, they help in the protrusion of the jaw. But if the left is not working, suppose because of some pathology, the right will push and the deviation will be seen towards the affected side. That is towards the uh, um, left side in this case. Now similarly, when you talk about the tongue deviation. Now we have the right genioglossus and the left genioglossus. Both of them, when they are pushing, they will protrude the tongue out. But suppose because of some error, left is not pushing. The right will push across the midline and the deviation will be seen finally towards the affected side. Okay. So we can conclude fifth nerve involvement, twelfth nerve involvement, the deviation can be seen on the affected side. Similarly, when you talk about the muscles of the palate, now suppose the tenth nerve is involved on the left side then what will happen the left sided palatal muscles will be paralyzed they will not be able to contract and only the right sided muscles are working so when there will be contraction the right sided muscles will pull the uvula towards the normal side not the affected side so 10th nerve lesion uvula will be deviated to the normal side yes so now we have discussed the jaw and the tongue and the uvula uh, uh, deviation similarly we can discuss about the angle of the mouth so angle of the mouth will be deviated again towards the normal side in case of seventh nerve lesion why because the affected side won't be able to contract is that fine so in a nutshell if we summarize this information we can write there is a kind of a rule of 17 this is rule of 17 which says that on one side we have cranial nerve 5 and 12 and the, on the other side we have cranial nerve 7 and 10. So 5 plus 12 is equal to 17, 10 plus 10 is also equal to 17. Now in case of injury to these nerves, deviation will be seen towards affected site. Deviation will be seen towards affected site. 
and in case of seventh and tenth nerve the deviation will be seen towards normal side towards normal side the deviation will be seen towards normal side okay so this is the thing that we have to understand now keeping this part in mind let us now come to the question so this was the question and in this question we can see the patient has hoarseness means the laryngeal involvement is there okay but we don't know till now whether the right side or the left side and the uvula is deviated towards the right side now uvula is supplied by 10th nerve and for the 10th nerve the deviation is towards the normal side not the affected side that now, now the uvula is deviated towards the right side which that means which side is normal right side which side is affected left side now we are looking at the lesion on the left side so it can be either at the nuclear level that is nucleus ambiguous of the left side or it can be on the vagus nerve of the left side yes now looking and where, what is the position of the nucleus ambiguous it is present at the medulla it is present at the medulla level now base of the bones cannot be the answer cuneate nucleus no right vagus no vagus can be involved but in this case right vagus cannot be involved because the uvula is deviated to the right side it is normal again this cannot be the answer yes left nucleus ambiguous or left vagus both of them can lead to this clinical features right so d will be the answer in this case i hope you have understood this yes and keep on following us for such clinical integrated questions in future as well all the very best. Thank you.